Okay, I've just, I was thinking about the flowers because I've just done the buttercup and the bluebell videos. I'll put a link to them. Um, and I did them with painted papers that were collaged together. And I thought how beautiful um, ones with tissue paper would be. So, I mean, that one's worked out worked really lovely. So I thought I'd do some poppies and I thought I'd just talk you through the process. This was a bit of a, just an experiment to see how it would all work. Um, and I did it, I painted it all green to make it look like a field and then I was going to put the poppies in. But um, I felt it needed some blue and stuff in it. So I'm just going to do it again, but with slightly different colours. I've just got some acrylics here and I'm just going to do a light blue sky and then just bring it down to a, a green which I will use as the fields. I'm doing two here, so I've got a line down the middle of these. I, I, I know the, the size I want because I've already got mounts and frames ready for this. So I'm just putting a, a light wash on over and I'm trying to keep the sky quite light because I want the poppies to actually hum a bit in front of it, you know? So. I've got some white in there, I mean it can be clouds or anything, can't it? So I've just got white and Carillion blue here. And I'll just do a coat, keep it nice and smooth for a sky. I'll do a coat and then let it dry. Right, then I'm going to start bringing in some greens. And I'm... Um, like it's enjoy it isn't it keep it light again because I want the poppies to shine through you can go up and down here because you're sort of going to let it look like some of the, the leaves are coming this um, grasses are coming through the tops so you can start that already I've got this lovely what is it pale olive green I really like this um, it's dried out it's finished more or less this top so I'm using it from the end it's a really useful colour, that one. As I said, keep it light. And you could mix it with the blue, just bringing it through. And if you want to add a bit of detail at this point, just bring some grasses through. Make sure all the white's taken out. All the white of the paper's taken out. And if you, like I've got those, that's pretty heavy handed, but I can bring that down with some more blue afterwards. I might do that right now. Let's see if I can. Just to take out how heavy handed I've got. That is not nice. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's better. I'll do some more on that, like so. So again, it really matters what you use to mark with. You know, I wonder if I can... Yeah, that would look nice as well. That's just a pencil, isn't it? The end of a pencil. Okay, so now I'm going to bring it down with some darker green to the bottom and then just keep going in much the same way. until you've just got grasses that are coming out. And the darker ones at the bottom. Right. I need more dark in there. I'm going to put more dark in the bottom there first. And then run it through. Finer paintbrush, just to sort of lift some of the colours through. So it's literally just a watered down acrylic on stretched watercolour paper. And I've used this olive green with acrylion blue just to bring out the greens. And I've used it pretty light. I'm going to take that out, it's clumsy. That's better. I'm 
I just do it until I feel I've got enough grasses in there and I like the way it's lying and as you could see you can make quite a few mistakes on it Okay, this is going to be two pictures. Sorry to make you, I sort of tend to be ridiculously efficient with everything I do, so I may as well do two while I'm doing this one. I won't make you sit and watch through two though, because they're both going to be exactly the same, more or less. But I will frame these up and sell them down at a little local gallery. It's a sort of, in a park, well it's um, Pavilion Gardens in Buxton and it gets a massive footfall. So I'm going to let that dry. There we go. To paint the red for the poppies, I just use, I've got old tiles here, but I've got a, a very fire engine red. I've got a fluorescent orange, and I've got an orange red. I've got a magenta and I've got a bit of yellow. And I just want to vary the, the different sorts of reds I've got. What I also do is I spray the napkin, which I lay down on a piece of plastic. And in this case, it's a bin liner. And that just helps the colours to run over each other. And you'll just see these makes... That's a really lovely puppy red. And you've got one, you want enough colour for it to be intense. You know when it's actually dry but still slightly translucent but I mean it doesn't all oh, that's I make it sound like that's important it doesn't matter and so you just add the different reds at different points of your napkin and I did about three of these just to get a really nice variety of color and it's amazing how much the napkin can take it actually the um Magenta isn't really the colour you want, it's too dark, it's too pink for a poppy. So if you put magenta on, make sure you tone it down with some red as well. Okay, so then you just let that dry. I mean, it takes a while in the studio because it's so cold at the moment. You let it dry and you, all these creases and stuff dry into it. I love this. Um, orange on it. It's surprising how well that works in the poppies. It's like a fluorescent orange but any bright orange will do. Okay, so do two of those. Just leave it out to dry. Just such amazing colours. There's one. Okay, take that over to dry. Right, I also need the poppy heads, the seed heads, and the poppy heads, I keep calling them heads, they're the centres of the poppies, I'm sorry I keep making that mistake, and also these buds that um, are just about to come out, so you can actually see the red coming through the green, they're really nice, and they're dead easy, paint them first and then cut them out. So for the seed heads, you just want a series of sort of marks like this, and I, first of all I do them in the ochre, so that wasn't quite right. So I just do make triangle shapes, little triangle shapes like so. And also the odd circular one. Just dead easy, scruffy, doesn't matter. Then I get the darker brown and I just do a triangle or a cross in them. They look very, very clumsy, but when they're done, I've got too much, I should change my paintbrush really. But I have in fact filmed this about three times. So you do like, it's basically shapes like that. Or a shape like that inside it. And then once you've drawn it with that, you go to the other end of your paintbrush and you just pull through the marks and you just get these quite nice sort of almost delicate marks that are, you've dragged through your paint. Uh, 
and then when they're dry I don't actually have time to wait but you just literally just cut them out and you've got these gorgeous little seed heads And for the actual poppy heads themselves, the centres of the poppy, I kept calling them heads in my video, I'm sorry. Right, you need a red, first of all, which is the outside, and an orange. Red and orange a bit at this point. And you just want shapes like so, smaller and bigger ones. And you do exactly the same thing. But you sort of, so you bring in your black, you just pull it round like so, make a nice poppy head. Poppy, it, it's poppy centre, it's the seed head. And you just get the end of your brush or something sh like a bamboo stick or anything. And you just pull it out like so. And then when you cut it out, they look lovely. And you can put leave as much black in there or as little as you like. I mean you can go into it afterwards with a bit of black just to sort of add some seedy type things, you know, sort of pollen heads. And when you cut it out, they just cut out incredibly easily. I also did a light green using this lovely olive green and other greens as well on a piece of paper and then I painted a light acrylic red well not it was not a light red it was a one of the darker reds an acrylic red but streaky over the top of it and that makes the partially ripe seed heads and these you would end up cutting out into little shapes they're still wet but I'm just going to show you so you just cut them out into the, the heads of the seed pods and it's amazing how easily they come out. So there's that one and you just stick it on the top of a seed head. And these you just cut out like so. So, um, so you, you can cut out the red because it'll just stick into the, it'll sort of end up being part of the flower. And something really instantaneous and just sort of general marking works so well. And there's your centre of your poppy. And you can actually, you can cut it in two if you just want a part of it and turn it the ups upside down, you see. So if you just wanted half of it. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, let's get on with the painting. So I paint papers in different colours to make the leaves and the stems. Some I paint in the light green and some in the dark green. I either cut them out directly from the papers or I've just demonstrated that you can just easily doodle out some leaves. You can do it on the back and then cut it out the right way round obviously and stick them on and if you make sure you keep a bit of movement and life into them and also that you bend them one way and then the other so that they're not all bending the same way because otherwise you'll have a poppy field that looks like it's been in the wind. You can twist your papers around like so with a good pair of little scissors um, or you can cut out the basic shape and then go into it which is really the probably the easier way to do it not quite so hard in your hands and just pull out the little bits there you go and there you've got a little green leaf and if you vary the greens that you're making out of them that really helps and also you can add details with a pencil or some pen and ink. I'm just adding some veins but I didn't really bother very much with it. I didn't really need to. Um, and the painted papers are just kept for other projects as well. So I cut out stems and I cut out stems with a little bud at the top to be the base of the flower and I cut out seed head pods and I, there was one I did that was red on the green and that made little pods that were just about to open they're very red you can see the petals in them 
and then I start setting up the papers, you know, positioning all the different poppies to see how the composition is going to go. I do have some idea what I want first, but because you can sort of put them randomly, it doesn't really matter. And what's really nice about it is it doesn't have to be exact, you know, the torn edges look really nice because they look like the torn, worn edges of poppies in a field. So the texture of the folded papers, the folded tissue paper, the intense colour of the reds, pigments of the acrylics, and the sort of rough edge of the tissue paper all are really conducive to making the poppies. There's a seed head that I cut out and then this is a little, um, just the very top of it, it gives a little dot of colour, a little dot of ochre in the picture and that is a red, it's green with red on it to show the poppies that just as they're coming out and that works really nicely too. So again, it's just about taking your time, getting your composition right, and remember to put some things behind the leaves and some things in front. There's a couple of poppies that I've put in the background that I've used a much duller orange um, because colour makes um, perspective as well as line. So the lighter colour it is, the less intense the tone, the more it will recede and the brighter the tone the more it'll go forward so I've used that a lot in this. That is a seed, a poppy head which I'm painted paper first as well. Um, I'm going to, I haven't put that into the video yet but I will do. And you put the poppy head so that it sits in front of the leaves that go behind it and then you put the of the petals that go behind it and then you put the petals that go come forward over the top of the head that you've cut out and it really gives it a perspective as well because it's amazing how much your eye is sensitive to what's laid down first and secondary. If you use petals that are slightly different tonalities, so on your tissue paper you will have painted your tissue paper with different types of reds and oranges and if you juxtapose these different tones you get very evident, natural, um, overlapping petals. Those were the painted heads that I did and they're so easy. Okay, just using my cellulose and book binding glue, well it's a uh, archival glue I've got to stick it down and you can let them be rough, you can crease them up, it all adds to the effect of the poppies. I wanted the composition to flow and to move so you sort of make it as organic as possible, don't regiment it too much, make sure that your negatives are thought about, that your gaps are probably erratic because nature's quite erratic. There's another poppy head that's red, so and it can be just like that. Some of them just stay red underneath. You can see the leaves, the um, poppy petals are just about to pop out, and this is one that's half open. And all these are really helpful just to make up different shapes and interest and movement in the composition. And then I just go on adding petals and leaves until it builds up, putting some behind the leaves and some in front and using the different tonalities to make sure you can see where the petals are but also to give it depth so the lighter the tones are the more in the background they are. And also if you put the brighter oranges to the top and the dark orange reds to the bottom you get a sort of gradation of colour which also suggests the depth um, because it looks like the sun has caught the ones on the top and then the ones to the bottom are caught within the shadowing of the actual fields and the growths. 
it's really good the um heads the the centers of the flowers are really useful to sort of decide where you're going to put something because they can sit so happily in the center of the picture here i'm just making because i realized i needed something that went behind this one it wasn't interesting enough as it is so i just simply cut the stem to fit one side and t'other of the poppy that was a poppy head that bent over and again it takes your eye down into the far left hand corner of the picture you've got these little shapes you can add on to add just a tiny bit of color so that it takes your head your eyes down and then there's a lovely dark red poppy to finish it off and again i think this one i made it look like it was an older poppy had been it was wide open um, and sort of into its more mature stage i suppose and then again look you juxtapose it with a really lovely bright poppy i think that's supposed to be in the background so i'm just going to need a little head to go in there and again the size of the heads makes a difference the smaller heads or centers the smaller centers can go to the back while the bigger centers come to the front and all you have to do is put a bit of a leaf in front of it and that gives it perspective too I'll get this one down once you've sort of got some idea of how the composition is going to work you get a bit more confident about putting them down and once you've got the petals ready, the paper's ready, and the petals all cut, it really doesn't take long at all. I'm fussing a bit with the shape of the petals, but it's more because I want it to extend out, you know, to sort of flounce out a bit more. And again, of course, you can add more to it. If you're not happy with it, give it even more depth because it'll just look like a fold in the petal. Oh here I've made up a little head to go on the top of that one. And just keep the leaves, because the leaves are so nice, because they themselves have such movement. And then, if you need to, you can keep adding darks and depths to the picture so that it again just gives it more depth more perspective and it's just a question of dragging bits of dark through which would be the darks between the stems and it can be very stylized you don't need to worry too much okay i've got so far with it some more petals cut and i'm just going to do the last bit now just mix some more of my archival glue and my cellulose glue just because it works really well with the petals. Okay, so I've done that side. It's going to be like that. And I want to perhaps a couple more darker leaves on the bottom, but that's finished. So now I'm going on to resolve this. That could have done with a few more poppies, the lighter coloured, the ones to, in the distance in the background, but I didn't do it, so um, I can't resolve it now. Um, I might put a couple more little light ones in the background there, like poppies in the distance. And honestly, it's just, I haven't even bothered to sort of cut them into poppy shapes. I just make sort of things. And then when I put them on, I sort of squash them into poppy shapes. Or something that might be construed as poppy shape because it's that's that utilizing the lovely sort of aspect of our brains filling in the gaps okay so now let's just decide where the next few are going to go i do like that one it's really nice and plotted it's got ex exciting vibrancy a movement that's i'm trying to as well because i've already got these ones that, that are supposed to be more backgroundy uh, let me see, I think I'll put it up on top of this one. Yeah, more like that. Going off in that direction, because I want so I want that one to, this one to appear in the background. So this one's the one I'm laying out now. 
you've got to try and make it really vibrant get some really nice colours in it to make it really sing I think this is a bright orange mixed with uh, just a normal red but a sort of very um, fire engine red and then get a really nice centerpiece for it there's a nice one there which is right really dark and strong and it brings it out doesn't it brings it forward so I've got that one there let's just put you see I could put a, an actual poppy seed the only thing is it doesn't suddenly it is brown when everything else has been green get these lovely ones where they're just about to come out so I'm going to put that there let's put a poppy there and then so and then put leaves and stems and things over the top of it so it appears to be in the background but still bright there. okay and then I can put some stems on top of it Popping one of these heads on, like so, just making it so that it fits. There's a better one. And then you've got a little poppy head seed, a seed head on top of that. Okay. Let's get some more leaves in there. Right, I've got some leaves. I've got some of the darkest stuff, so I'm just going to cut some leaves. You can draw these out or you can cut them and you, they just go back on themselves and honestly you don't really have to worry too much about it it just looks okay they just seem to have a lovely personality of their own two now I'm just gonna bring in a nice big bright one down here so it's more there and it could actually I could get one down the bottom here so I will I'm gonna make it so that it's sort of you know a dying one when all the petals sort of hang off it and then I'm gonna put one down here the colors of these reds are just amazing it's utilizing the way the paint sits with this method it's just so incredibly effective and now a nice big bright one at the bottom here, just to finish it off. I mean that might be one too many, but I don't care. I absolutely love their intense colours. I can't believe how quickly you use up the petals. And there we go, there's a really good colour. And then I shall do an abstract with the leftovers of this gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I do want that very, very bright orange. Isn't that pretty there? There's that gorgeous salmony pink one. And it's not so bright orange. It has that salmony colour. Okay. I'm going to fill that up. One more centre. There. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Okay, and then that's finished. And I've said before, I love it when it sort of goes over the edges of the frame and everything. So it's, ex it's sort of oozing out beyond itself I want to make it so that because you can just fold these until you feel they work and you push them about and shape them with your with the paintbrush and the glues that's a bit strange let's get these down so they're going behind the head and the head oops a daisy Okay, that's done. So in fact I've got two, that one and that one, although they do look nice together as well. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. But I may leave it, I could do with a small one there. But no, I'm going to leave it. So I'm just going to make sure that everything's stuck down. 
but I generally I leave it and then I come back and see what it's like when it's dry. And remedy, what's that? Oops. I obviously thought I was going to put something in there. Okay, any blemishes I can paint out. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I've done a series of these flower ones. There's the buttercup, some bluebells, and now the poppies. I hope there's some use, and they'd be so lovely, stuck onto tissue paper um, and made into some papers or something for a journal. Yeah, that could be really good fun. So you could stick it onto tissue paper and then double the tissue paper so you had two layers of it. Okay, thank you. Um, if, you're, if it was any use to you, please remember to like and subscribe. Many thanks. All the best. Bye.